Okay, so today I got a new power supply in. Uh, I went with this one because it could get delivered here fast and uh, that it's programmable. It has a little USB output, so I should be able to put like my power supply reading somewhere in one of the corners of the screen eventually. Um, so that's why I went with this one. It's pretty cheap. It's just another switch mode power supply, not a linear. Uh, need to get a nice... Uh, nicer power supply eventually I was planning on buying a nicer one soon but my daily driver one died on me so here's what we get in the box so this one was sold as a rock seed power supply they uh, seem to brand it a couple of different brands uh, I'm sure that this really long company name here out of China is the actual manufacturer of it uh, but yep yeah, comes a little CD I'm sure that's for the software uh, there's some open source software on the internet that I plan to use instead uh, but let's get this thing out of the box alright comes with the USB cable for it just the normal USB to type B connector and let's see if I can get it out of there All right, got power connector and a uh, pretty cheap uh, connector here. All right, so yep, they uh, didn't even bother putting the sticker, <laughs> the the rock seed or whatever uh, sticker. They have a couple of different stickers they'll put here. I guess this is one of the ones you can get from the factory for when they make it. Uh, I'm sure that internally this is pretty much the same power supply as my last one. Uh, just kind of glancing in past the fan, it does look like a relatively similar build inside there. Uh, actually, uh, this this is looking a little different, so just the same shape box for it. But yeah, we have the uh, USB output there, and then everything else here so let's uh plug it in real quick and see if it lets out the magic smoke uh, is there a switch on here no cool it's uh only this all right and there we go we're set to five volts uh, one amp and i guess press that and it starts up but yep cool I like it when it's nice and simple and you don't need to read the manual to uh, get it to work. So, all right, so we can scroll through here. Let's see. All right, so major and minor. Oh, it's a shame it doesn't let you go to the 10th the there, but we'll just go ahead. We'll do 14. Uh, let's see. Let's let's try this. Let's see here. Does, ah, there we go. Cool. So... 14.2 is what I like to use and so sets that all right so now how do I set this to memory oh no we're, we're going through this sorry y'all can't really see the menus here tilt it up a little bit so you can see what I'm doing um, all right so I'm gonna try to figure this live on camera on how to do this I don't I don't think that you should really need to read a manual to be able to operate the power supply uh, I'll probably need to read some instructions to do the USB portion, uh, but that's different. Uh, I understand needing to, to read instructions to, to operate the software, but this this UI should be easy enough to figure out. Let me just prop something underneath here so that way y'all can still see what I'm doing. It's not quite enough, I don't think. Let's try this cup here. There we go. So we have, you can't really see these two buttons. This is the left and right area arrow here and then we have overcurrent uh over voltage over current protection um and so let's see so memory one's 3.2 volts by default let's see so those are all the defaults that are programmed on there let's uh program this guy though so one i want it at 12.2 zero um, for the voltage and then oh 
What? Cool. So if I hold it down, does that program it? I guess I just press it once and that sets it. Let's see. Let's go to there. And let's go back. Cool. So that's set. Memory 1 is now set. So let's turn it on. Alright, so now we're giving out the 12.2. I meant to set that to 14 though. Let me... Not 12.2, but 14.2. 14. There we go. Okay, so there's some delay in it moving. Okay, so, let's see. Alright, and then that, that dropped it down to the 9.6. You have to turn it off before you can change your modes. No? Uh, what's this U? Alright, it's off. This turns it on and off. This is like the master power here. Alright. Ah, here we go. That's how we get down here. Okay. So I want to set the over the amperage output to a maximum of four. Four amps is enough on here. So there we go. That sets that. Alright, and now we're at 14 volts. Cool. Still not completely sure what I'm doing with this, but there we go. So it's on because it doesn't say off. Um, if I change it, how do I get it to change? So memory one, we're there. And it's on. Now it's off. Memory two. That turns it back on to memory one. Hmm. I may actually have to read the manual on this. Alright, now we're at 9 volts and it's on. Okay. You have to double click it. Alright, I figured it out. So you double click them and it'll go to that one. That's simple enough. Cool! So, there we go. Able to figure out everything that I needed to figure out without reading the manual. So, I'm happy with it. The UI is not terrible. It, it works pretty good. I wanted to give a realistic idea of how long it takes to figure out how to use this UI. Because uh, I'm used to just the really simple analog kind of you know, no programmable ones. I wanted this one because programmable because I do swap between... 14 volts and um, the 3.3 volts and 5 volts that some of the microcontrollers run at. So I want something capable of just press the button instead of turning the knobs and trying to get it lined up perfectly. So seems to work all right. Uh, we'll do some testing here in a minute uh, on the voltmeter. And hopefully I'll be able to display these up on the screen somewhere. Probably up right. It's been ta long talking about these. Uh, they're pretty short and almost useless because nobody really wants to have their power supply this close on their workbench. You're normally going to put it up on the shelf above it. Uh, I mean, I, I had the old one sitting there, but that's, I don't know. I, I never really thought about where to put my power supply since I moved, uh, but this one's definitely going up there, especially since I got the preset buttons and stuff. Um, so, uh, definitely, I think this is the, yeah, this is definitely longer than the old one. I actually still have the ones that came with the old power supply. They're a couple inches longer. The banana connectors are the same that are on here as the one that were on the other one, where you can just take the screw and unscrew it and use it, so you can put it on whatever. Uh, which is what I did. I just went to God. I've I've had these for about two years now. Um, they they're time to replace. They've gotten smashed a couple of times, and even metal fatigue broke the cable there um, on these ones. But they're just uh, alligator clips that you can buy at Harbor Freight, where they put wire run through it uh, to make longer ones, which is what you'll probably end up doing with this. But 
it, at least it does include them. So at least you've got them, and at least you can remove the banana connectors and make your own. Uh, just put your own alligator clips on the end of them. Also, uh, these are pretty small alligator clips, so wouldn't work for some of your large applications. Because, I mean, this thing can go up to 30 volts at 10 amps, so you can put out a lot of power. Um, uh, you, you can you can even use one this size to do some basic amplifier repair. You can't turn the amplifier all the way up or anything. You, you definitely can't do your dyno runs or anything with that. You need like server power supplies for that. But something this size is more than adequate for doing the repair and just kind of idling it while you work on them. Plus, you put them to, put it down to nine volts when you're doing your really basic tests, and then put it up to 12 when you're trying to do some actual audio or 14 volts uh, to reduce clipping but the 9 volts is nice because it, it when they amplifiers blow up it, it's a little less of an explosion I don't know I mean the current limiting helps with that too it helps keep them from really catching on fire or anything you just get you know it'll just hit its current limit and they, they tend to make noise. I don't know about this one, but the old one tended to make noise when you hit that 10 amps on it and it start current limiting. Um, but yeah, so it, it includes the USB cable, which is nice. It includes the, the connectors, although they are kind of uselessly short. Um, still nice that it includes them because it has something to get you started and it has the parts for you to make another one. And these are pretty cheap banana connectors too but it's it's always nice to have them uh and it and it did include the uh power cable as well which is always nice when they include them um i mean i i, I have some higher quality ones that are uh, a little more flexible and all that i use on the bench but still always nice when you get them because some of these some of these entry level units and stuff they just they don't include everything to get started sometimes uh, so it's always nice to open the package and everything be there, including your software, even though who really has optical drives anymore, or, or even if you do have an optical drive, when was the last time you used it? Um, it's, it's weird to think that optical drives are now kind of a thing of the past, but we're getting to that point. Okay, so I have a simple test here where I just have my precision multimeter hooked up to the... Um, power supply with a slight load on it so I have a 99 to 02 instrument cluster just because they put a little bit heavier load than the 03 to 07 ones do uh, so yeah there we go um, it's pretty accurate so we're getting 14.9 here and 14.2 there now these probes aren't perfect if I jiggle it a little bit we get a little bit of variation there uh, same with on the ground um, but it it's seems to be pretty accurate uh it's definitely uh with a load um without a like a lighter load it starts to float up a little bit because still reads the 14.2 there but it's 14.23 here um but still within reason for a bench power supply for repairing instrument clusters and stuff i mean obviously it's not a precision uh power supply uh, but it's it's a high quality switch mode power supply. I mean, this this is um, I'm definitely happy with the level of accuracy. I've already did uh, two instrument cluster repairs off camera, uh, just making sure that I liked it and stuff. I did notice that uh, it reads a little bit different uh, than my old one did uh, on kind of the normal power of things. So. Uh, I don't know which one's more accurate. Maybe I'll get around and do some testing here. But yeah, take a look at it with no load on there. Let's take these guys off and put that in. So that's with no load. We get 14.23. Uh, so definitely accurate enough for what I'm doing. I did try to install the software on the computer. It wasn't working, uh, but it was open source software. I haven't tried to use the proprietary software that came on the CD because it like wanted to change settings and uh, <laughs> in some of the stuff I didn't want it to mess with. You know, I don't have a ton of faith in uh, Chinese software. Uh, you know, it's going to report back to the mainland. <laughs> 
<laughs> if if I install it. I don't know. Uh, I didn't look into it. I definitely didn't decompile it or anything, but I'll go ahead and turn that off and that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with this power supply. Uh, the real company that actually makes it is like uh, Tommy. Here, I'll, let, me, let me switch over to the screen and we'll take a look at the company that actually makes it. Okay, so here's their official website. Uh, I guess the name of the company would be E. Tomins or Tomins. I don't know. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name, but here's kind of their overview website. Uh, I am using the Google Translate the page from Chinese to English here, uh, but still some of it's still in Chinese because they used a lot of pictures and it won't translate that. Uh, so this this one, I'll, as bad as I want it, won't work here in the United States because uh, it. Uh, Input voltage is the 220, not the 120 volt. Uh, but man, does it do a lot of power? It's 60 volts at 15 amps. Um, so that's 900 watts. It's it's a little expensive too. Uh, a little, little out of the budget for what I'd want for this kind of unit. Let's take a look at their Alibaba page and see get some pricing ideas. Uh, let's see. Yep, let's change that to English. And we're also going to need the Chinese Yuan. Uh, all right. So these prices are not actually in U.S. dollars down here. They are in the Chinese Yuan. Um, so like this is pretty much the same unit I have. This one's just the one that's rated to 5 amps. Uh, so let's check put that to this so 76 US dollars to order one directly from there so I really don't feel like I got a bad deal on Amazon because uh, I, I paid $99 and that's like two days shipping and they bought it from them first and then put their sticker on it um, and, but yeah they, they have a bunch of the different ones this one I believe is the one that can go up to 60 volts let's, let's open it up and see so and th these are the 220 ones, the the dark gray ones, I think. Yes, yeah, so this one's 60 volts at 3 amps. So uh, they, they have a bunch of different models of, of the same one. If you look inside the, at the PCB on the one I ordered, I, I could see through the slots. You could see where on the PCB it had a bunch of different check marks for, I, I'm assuming it's just a different power supply in there. Because I think that was on the back of the face plate that I was seeing those. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the company that made it. They they didn't sponsor me. I mean, obviously they didn't sponsor me. I'm not. I don't even have their branded one. I have a different branded one. But um, yeah, they, it, it this is the same thing as what I got. Uh, they just they come in different colors, and they this company sells them in the different colors too. So I just thought I'd share that with you. That this is the actual company. If you want to import them, oh, okay. So the white ones come with the RS two thirty two connector on there instead, because it is uh, the USB port on the back is just in um, um, what do you call it? it, it it's it's just a serial over USB going on. So. Uh, you can in intercept it with anything. So I, I'll probably write a c custom script for uh, reading the voltage and stuff off of there. Uh, I just have to figure out how to do it. And take some time to do it because uh, because uh, I, I really just want it just to have those numbers. I don't want. Let me pull up the software that I was having problems with. Let's see. So this is the open source software for it. This is what it looks like. I, I couldn't get it to work. Um, I just would get this error port not open. Like you go to settings and you put in a COM port. So COM 16, because that's what it's on. Uh, click close, nothing happens. Close it, still nothing. Doesn't work. Um, so this this particular software was a bust this was the open source one off of the internet so yeah hopefully you liked this video hopefully you learned something uh it's the power supply i bought i just figured i'd share it with you guys it's, this is in no way sponsored uh, so i should have started that out in the video this is not a sponsored video i didn't get paid to do it i just wanted to review and unbox the power supply that i bought for my my bench so hopefully you liked it uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.